Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 232. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, and then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 230 to 232. Hey, in this video, we have a data set, and we want to see how to create with formulas summing with three criteria. Now, we have seen a video like this before. If I scroll up here, I always have lots of notes and uh, other reference videos. We saw this Excel Array Formula Series number seven, Boolean Logic. However, it's going to be one addition to this formula that will allow us to either select any one of the products or all of them, which means uh, we want to sum really without a criteria here. Now, with a pivot table, this is easy. And at the end, I'll show you a pivot table. But sometimes people really do want formulas. Not only that, in this video, we'll also see that some product, which we use for a lot of our array formulas, won't help us here. So we'll have to do something slightly different. Let's go over and look at our data set. I would like to be able to have a, a dynamic range here. So as I add new records, the formulas will update. Now. You could use uh, the offset function and name, which we've done in other videos. But if you have 2003 or 2007, there's a nice, simple way to do this. You convert your data table with field names at the top and row records in rows to either a list, 2003, or table, 2007. Click in one cell and Control L. That's the keyboard shortcut in uh, 2003, and it will say Create List. I'm going to Escape. Let's try it again, Control T. And uh, my table has headers, click OK. Now, there are names created. And there are, it actually doesn't matter. You can just highlight these ranges, and they are dynamic. Now, to uh, make what I do in this video compatible with other versions, I'm actually going to explicitly name these. You do not have to do this if you have already done list or um, table feature. Now, to name, I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to actually click in one cell, and I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to highlight the whole table. Control asterisk. That's asterisk on the number pad. And now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to name this column pro, this column sales rep. See, the, the name is at the top of the column. Control Shift F3. That's create names from selection. Now, I only want it from the top row, so I'll uncheck that. Click OK. Now we can check. Let's go see if we can find Pro. Point to it from the name dropdown. And sure enough, it has it highlighted. Uh, and then Sales. And sure enough, it has it highlighted. Now let's go over and see this formula. And we have data validation here based on uh, uh, some cells over there. Now let's start out our formula. We'll start right here. Equals SUM. And we're going to need to do some true, false Boolean logic or math. Now, the first bit of the first criteria, remember we have one, two, three criteria here. So the first criteria is sales rep. Now, in parentheses, so I have two parentheses there. The green one, I need that sales rep field. Now, I've already named them, and I'm going to use F. 3, F3, that's the paste name keyboard shortcut. And then we need to find sales rep. Double click. And I have to ask, is that equal to this? Now, for our formula, this is a name. So by default, it's locked, which we want. But this cell reference, as we copy the for this formula down, we want it to move relatively. But when we move from column H to I to J, uh, we need this lock. So I'm going to. Um, with my cursor next to that cell reference, hit the F4 key one, two, three times. That locks the column. So when it's going this way, it's locked on G12. But when we copy it down, it'll move relatively to G13, 14, 15. Close parentheses. Now, this is Boolean logic. We've asked an array of values. Is that equal to a single value? If you were to highlight this, you could see all the trues and falses by hitting the F9 key. F9 is a way to evaluate in the middle of the formula. So we get a bunch of trues and falses. Control Z, don't leave it that way, because it won't be dynamic. Now we need to multiply by another set of trues and falses. Of course, true times true is 1. 
true times false or false times true or false times false is 0. So our second set is region. So I'm going to hit F3, find my region, double click, equals this right here. And now I'm going to lock this one going down, row reference, but not across uh, the columns, close parentheses. Now times, and we need our sales. And I'm going to hit the F3 key, get my sales. Actually, uh, let's double click that. We don't need, because we're not going to have a criteria there. Now, we can, uh, this will be true or false. This will be true or false. So when we get a true times a true, that's one times whatever the associated sales value. And that's a way of getting a, an array of all the sales values that uh, have met this criteria and this criteria. But remember, we have three. So we come over here, times. And now, here's the tricky part. We have um, product one, two, three, four, which we will ask uh, another array product equals to this. The problem is the all. What we want for the all is just this right here. So there's various ways to do this. Here, we're going to use the if. And the if will either deliver a number 1 here, which will retain exactly this for all of the values, or will deliver this new Boolean true false. So I'm going to say if this right here, and I'm going to lock that in all directions, hitting the F4 key, equals, in quotes, all. If that equals all, which is one of the drop downs here, then what do we want? One. So there's the value if true, comma, the value if false. Hey, we want another uh, uh, tr uh, series of trues and falses. So in parentheses, I'll hit F3, find that product. And that is equal to this. And that needs to be locked in all directions. So I'll hit F4, close parentheses. So the if will deliver the one, and it will just have all, or it will add a new series of trues and falses. Close parentheses on the if, close parentheses on the sum. And now we must use Control-Shift-Enter. Some product won't work here, because the if, and we'll see this in a moment, the if will only take the first value from this array and not the whole array. So now I have the sum, control, shift, enter. I'm going to copy it down and then copy it over. Now we can see if this works. We'll just select four. We'll select all. And sure enough, uh, that works just perfectly. Now let's click in this cell and hit F2. And I'm going to actually highlight this as a way of, and then I'm going to control C, a way of copying that formula without having the cell references uh, move. Click down here, F2, control V. Now, I actually do want all of these to move down here. So watch this. This is a sneaky little trick. I'm going to point to the edge and click and drag that right there. I'm going to point to this, click and drag right there, click and drag right there. Boy, is this sneaky. Click and drag right there. All right, now uh, I want to add some product here and see what happens. So now I just have some product. And we use this a lot for arrays because we don't have to use Control-Shift-Enter. But uh, so let's just hit Enter. And then copy it down. Ooh, so far it looks like it's working. Copy it over. But now let's see what happens when we select an individual product. All zeros. Here's the reason why. And we want to run Formula Evaluator uh, to see how what happens to the formula when we don't use Control-Shift-Enter. Formula Evaluator is in Formulas, Formula Auditing, uh, evaluate formula in 2007 and 2003. It's tools formula auditing formula, evaluate formula. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt T U F. Alt tough. Alt tough. So I'm going to zoom through this by hitting the evaluate or enter. See, it's given us a tr bunch of true falses, and now it's going to evaluate these. See, it gives us a bunch of falses. So false times false will be a 0. You keep hitting Enter, because the part we're interested in, here's the sales, we'll do that, is this. Watch. Here's the if. It's asking, is that pro1 equal to all? False. So it jumps to here. And watch what happens. This pro is a bunch of values, right? But what? It's getting just the first one. And then when you hit Evaluate again, so now it's comparing P2 to P1. So if we don't use Control-Shift-Enter, this little part of the formula is just going to be a single value and not the whole array.
If we go up here and hit Alt T U F and then go through this again to the last part here, it says pro equals all false, but watch this. It gives us the whole array of values. So because we did control shift enter for this particular formula, it gave us the whole array. Now I'm going to click uh, down here, uh, hit F2. You can use sum product, but you have to use then control shift enter. So in that case, I switched to sum because it's a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. Now let's do, uh, see if we can do a pivot table in the last little 30 seconds here. I'll just do it. Alt NVT, that's the keyboard shortcut in this version. In earlier versions, it's Alt uh, DP. Alt NVT. I'm going to put it in this uh, spreadsheet right here, maybe in cell uh, G27. And then I'm going to drag the pro to the report filter, the sales rep to the row, the region to the column, the sales to the values. Once I got that, I'm going to close the field list. I'm going to scroll over here. And sure enough, we can see we have our pivot table. And here, this is called in 2003 page. 2007 is called filter. And then we can filter the whole little report here. We can see that that works just fine. The pivot table is a lot faster. But if you do like to uh, have your formulas, then uh, this formula right here with that uh, excellent little if for all at the end will do the trick. All right, we'll see you next trick.